guess that makes sense. Good morning, YouTube. All right, we're gonna make one of the best dishes you could have for fall and winter. We are doing a slow, rich braised beef. We're doing it with loads of red wine, lots of flavorful ingredients, and the result is amazing. Just the best. <laughs> Let's cook, y'all. We got a family to feed. All right, so we have beef shank. Bladen had said last week he wanted braised short ribs, which of course I can't find. Um, I don't really want to drive up to Johnson City or Knoxville. But when I went into the grocery this morning, I found beef shank, which is perfect. Now, when you take these out of the packages, you know, just look at mine. They're all different thicknesses. But you may find a large flap of, of fat. That's kind of gross. You cut that off, right? The rest of it, you're really not going to have to worry about. But you don't really need that. That doesn't do anything for anybody. And so if you've got excess fat like that, just get rid of it. And I need to sharpen my knife. Um, Joey, you're in your drawer, son. Go back that way for a second. I need to talk to you real quick. Okay, you're gonna have to give me two seconds because I can't even turn my phone off. Hang on. Sounded a little ominous, didn't it? Apparently what was so urgent is we need money to go to the mall. <laughs> Which I think is funny. Because the mall, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's cycled right back around. Now it's 1987 again, which perfect. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I trimmed off all those excess flaps. Um, and that's not really fat that you're going to be able to do a whole lot with. That's not something that you can render. There are different types of fats on animals. And that one is just kind of like greasy, gross fat. It won't, it won't do anything but make stuff sticky, greasy. All right, now this is our SOS seasoning. So it's salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. And I put a little bit of paprika and I use uh, accent. And I put it, this is my base seasoning for just about all of my Western style cooking. And this particular recipe is kind of a, I guess if you had to ascribe it to somebody, this is kind of a French inspired I'm not going to claim authentic much of anything if it's not Appalachian, but there we go. And then I've got my big giant Dutch oven, which I think I announced a couple days ago I'm about to go buy a new one, which is kind of my excuse to go shopping. Um, so I know my Dutch oven is not beautiful. I know this. This poor Dutch oven has worked itself to death. All right. So season both sides. And then I've got about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of butter and an equal amount of, of olive oil over here. And the first step in braising um, almost any kind of meat is you're going to sear it real well, which develops the color. Then you're going to cook it in an enclosed container, which is why I have a Dutch oven, an enclosed container with a small amount of liquid for a long, slow period of time. So searing liquid, that, that's your braising, okay? Now this first step, once this gets nice and hot, once we're able to hear it talking to us, I'm going to sear each of these once, twice, flip, take it out. And then I've got a whole bunch of aromatics over here that are gonna go in the pot for when we throw that in the oven. I may not throw it in the oven. I may just do it on the stove top. I don't know. Depends on how lazy I feel. So the first step, our butter has gotten, you can see it, it's gotten foamy. Yep, and it's talking to us. So we're gonna braise these. I guess we're gonna do them three at a time. We just want lots of color and then let them sit there. Okay, if you keep moving them around, they don't have enough time to develop any color. So let them sit, be patient, give them a good, mm, you know what, I'm gonna set a timer. I'm gonna call it five minutes per side, but I bet it's longer. There, I gave it six minutes. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'll see how long these takes take per side so I can tell you when I get back and then I'll meet you back here. All right, so I set a timer and this is what they look like after six minutes. See that? See that? You want that rich color. So I'm actually gonna give it probably another three or four minutes on the first side. I want it nice and deep. And then as I get each side the right color, I'm going to flip it over and it's gonna go over here just to hang out while I do something else. But five minutes wasn't enough. I was right. All right, real quick. I'm about to turn these over for the first time. I wanna show you something, something to watch out for. See how dark the butter is getting right there? Just keep an eye on it. 
You don't want to let it burn. Once it's burned, ooh, that's perfect. Once your butter's burned, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You gotta scrap what's in the pot and start over. Um, but if you notice that it starts to get too dark, add a little more oil or butter, that just brings the temperature down. All right, we're gonna keep browning. And I bought these about a million years ago and I keep forgetting that I have them. And I cannot, for the life of me, keep butcher's twine <laughs> in my kitchen. I have too many kids that want to do too many projects. All right, so these are just little muslin bags. And the whole purpose of this bag is to create a bouquet garni, which is just a bundle of herbs. Ta-da! Normally, I will toss... Let me get in here. Normally, I will toss just the, the stem of these aromatic herbs in the pot, and then later we just pull them out. But I've got a lot of them this time, and it's more than just a few. So my bay leaf is broken into pieces, but that's about one good bay leaf. All right, so, da-da. If you were in Europe, you would simply take some butcher's twine and bundle up your herbs right there, and then they go in the pot, just like that. All right, for right now, we're only gonna do a couple things. We're going to season our pot with salt and pepper. We did our beef, but now look at the volume of food we've added. We wanna make sure that that is correctly seasoned. So that's a good heavy sprinkle of kosher salt. And two teaspoons of black pepper. These are rich, bold, hearty flavors. So we want to season somewhat aggressively. All right, now this is only gonna take about 10 minutes. And what's happening is the juice or the liquid from these vegetables is kind of deglazing our pan. It's picking up all those browned bits off the bottom and incorporating it into the veggies where it's going to eventually, we're gonna put these back in here with some, a little bit of liquid and that flavor is gonna be spectacular. But for right now, about 10 minutes. We wanna let these get lovely and fragrant. All right, Ben is opening our bottle of wine for me. Um, so we're ready to kind of put everything together and do the last few steps on uh, what we need to do to just let this park and simmer. Um, typically, you would put your oven on 250 to 300, throw it in the oven and let it sit all afternoon. I'm gonna do it on the stove top. So I'm just gonna cover it up and do it on the stove top. Our veggies, are nice and fragrant. Whoop. How is it? Ricky doesn't like the wine. <laughs> He's behind me making disgusted faces. You don't like red wine. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of red wine either, but I love what it does for food, especially beef. Okay. Make sure any of your collected juices go right back in the pot. All right, to this, last few things. I'm going to add a bunch of mushrooms. I'm leaving them whole. Because I can. Actually, Blade didn't complain so much about the mushrooms that I don't want to hear it. So I'm leaving them, I'm leaving them whole so he can pick them out. And then I've got a bottle of Merlot. There, bottle of Merlot. Let me put that in there. And finally, beef broth. I wish I had homemade beef broth. I usually only have homemade beef broth a couple of times a year. I always have it at Christmas because I've done a prime rib. And then if I'm if I'm doing something special, I will take the time to make homemade beef broth. But that's not very often. And I'm a broth nerd. 
I think it's the most spectacular stuff ever. I love it. I think we all should be using more of it. All right. This is all that's going to happen to this pot for several hours. Now, beef shank has a lot of connective tissue in it. If you try to cook this real fast, the only thing that's gonna happen is that beef is gonna toughen up. But if you let this have several hours, nice and low and slow and be kind and be patient, and don't say bad things about it, it will turn out to be the most luscious, velvety stuff on the planet, right? And that red wine is, all the alcohol is gonna cook out, right? And that broth and the wine and the mushrooms, the onions and the carrots, all those beautiful fresh herbs and the juices from the beef are all gonna to come together into a dish that is gonna be gorgeous and silky and fabulous, okay? All right, put a lid on it, let it come to a simmer, reduce it as far as you can reduce it, and then just be patient. All right, two hours. Can you see that? Probably not, let's see. Can you see it barely moving? There we go. All right, we're starting to see what we wanna look for. What we have is the meat has started to pull away from the bone, and you can see that the marrow has melted from the middle of that bone, and has melted into our pot, which helps make this, this cooking liquid so luscious, right? But we're not there yet, and you can tell because if you go to pick this up, nothing shreds yet. When this, see, it's still got a lot of um, structural integrity. I don't know, what do, what do you call that? It, it will, That's that one's starting to get there. It will turn velvety and, and absolutely fall apart. And the bones will, will come away with almost no effort, okay? So we knew that this was gonna take a while. That's fine, it's doing what we thought it would. We're gonna put another hour and a half to two hours on here and we're just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna go run some errands actually. Okay, so we have now gone another two hours and I've now gotten two different phone calls asking me if they could eat this stuff. <laughs> look at the difference in color. Look at how much that's intensified. Okay, so when we look at the beef, you see how that bone is just slipping right out? That's what we're after. And when you look at the meat itself, you want it to have this shred just pull apart quality. So it just disintegrates. That's perfect. Now, I am gonna turn this off. I'm gonna make some grits. And the last little step I'm gonna do, if you're looking at this sideways, I don't know how much of it you can see. You can see how glossy that is. That's the oil that has come up to the top. I'm gonna to skim a lot of that off, okay? So this is last steps. We're almost there. Skimmed all